Today we're going to be talking about the false covering doctrine. We're going to be talking about religious leadership, false judgments coming from religious leadership. We're also going to be talking about how uh, the leadership in much of the church is out of order and backwards. Um, First, I just want to briefly share a few things the Lord's been speaking to me. Uh, regarding the narrow path that we are on as his disciples and choosing Jesus and to go all the way with Jesus. You know, the further we go with him, the narrower the path becomes, the more difficult it becomes. We must keep our eyes directly on Jesus. You can easily misstep. The higher the path, The further you go in the Lord, the higher the path is. The more slippery it becomes. The more difficult. You take your eyes off of Jesus even for a little bit and you can misstep and slip and fall. Telling you the enemy is coming after those who want to go all the way with Jesus and have made that decision. The Lord's warning us not to agree, come into agreement with man's ideas and man's way of doing things in the good ideas from the self-life of man that seem spiritual. We've got to be able to discern whether something is from the Lord or whether it's from the heart and mind of man. Is the Lord building it? Or are ministers with gifts building it. We've got to be very careful. The Lord does not want us to come into agreement and partner with what man is building in their own good ideas. He wants us to only do those things that we see him doing. So that's what he's telling me. I'm sharing that as a warning to all of us. You know, the false judgment that is coming out of the religious system and from religious leaders that are in a position, that are, they're in a leadership position and they're bound by this system, this way of doing things, this American Christianity culture thing. And it's almost like the Lord's true leaders have begun coming outside of this system and are standing on the outside and calling to the church, calling to all who will hear to come out of this religious camp and follow Jesus and journey with him unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. To live this internal life, to let the Lord's internal kingdom fill them, consume them, Till Christ's life is coming forth. The religious camp of the charismatic movement is still focused on other things than the full gospel. They say they preach the full gospel, but the full gospel is Christ Himself coming forth from us fully manifested. The seed of Christ, the incorruptible seed, coming forth to full measure in us. Becoming more and more aware of this inwardly. As the Lord takes me down this path of following Him. The Lord first called me out of the charismatic movement. The charismatic religious system. In 2014, actually the Holy Spirit was began speaking to me probably in 2012 about it. But he, I remember when he officially called me out in the beginning of the year of 2014. And he gave me that scripture in Hebrews chapter 13, 11 through 14. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate 
Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. And that's the journey that we're on, guys. Seeking that city which is to come, that heavenly city where Christ rules and reigns. Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, city of the living God. He's calling us outside this religious camp to a relationship with Him, to a journey of knowing Him, where He speaks to us individually each day. We, He unveils the Scriptures in us, and it's an inward leading, an inward revealing where we know Him. We can honestly say we know Him. We know His will. We can, it's when there's all these different voices and all this confusion in the church. All this stuff on social media. Brother rising up against brother. Some of the church turning to a one world religion. Some of the church falling into a false grace doctrine. So, and, and much of the church not believing that we're in the time of the book of Revelation. And all these other things, all these voices, all these con contradictory teachings. But when you follow him, you hear his voice. The voice of the Good Shepherd. The voice that leads you beside still waters and green pastures. You hear that voice. The voice of the One who sits on His throne. The Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. And it's a journey into Him. Where He becomes your life. Where He increases in you. Well, you know Him. You come to know Him. You know, John the Baptist and Jesus were opposed by the religious leaders. They were questioned by the religious system. They weren't approved by the religious system because they were not accountable to the religious system. The religious system and the religious leaders are not going to be approving of those messengers of the Lord. They are not going to be approving of those who are coming outside of the camp and following Jesus. They are not going to approve of the remnant that is separating itself from this thing called the American Christian organization that has hijacked true Christianity, true discipleship. It's a form of godliness, but denies the power of it. You know, they did not approve of John. They couldn't recognize Jesus. Right? Because they weren't accountable to them. Understand this. They were not accountable to the religious leaders of the time. John the Baptist was raised in the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, sent forth by the Father. He didn't go to the Bible college. He wasn't known by any of the leadership. Right? So you know the questions of the Pharisees. You know the question of the religion. Well, who commissioned you? Who sent you? Same with Jesus. They were questioning Him. How do we know by what authority you do these things? See, we don't know you. You're not approved by our religious leadership. You're not accountable to us. We didn't approve your ministry, right? But let me tell you something. The Lord Jesus Christ will raise people up and He will do the same thing way now that he did then. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
And you got a lot of the charismatic church quoting that scripture when it suits their need, when it suits their benefit, their doctrine for healing. Oh, of course, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever when we're talking about healing. But wait a second. We're talking about someone, a minister coming out of the wilderness <laughs> that we don't know, that hasn't been approved by us. No, no, no. See, they will not approve the remnant church. They will not approve of those messengers that are outside of their control outside of their authority outside of their submission yet jesus and john the baptist went forth anyway by the will of god because god called them forth and sent them forth and the fire of god burned in them and they did not give heed to the religious leaders for one second they did not submit to their authority they did the will of the father and that's what the Lord is calling this generation to do. To come forth out of this system. To break free from its control and its manipulation. And to not give heed to the religious spirit and the Pharisees and those religious leaders that are bound by this system. This organizational Christianity. This form of man's ideas and man's programs, and man's systems, instead of the will of God, through Christ building His church. Christ coming forth in His living stones, assembling His temple for a holy dwelling place in the Spirit. You know, I had some ministers from Puerto Rico contact me around a year ago they came across an article that i'd written on montana and spiritual warfare in montana and they were praying about setting up a church in somewhere in montana and they wanted to speak with me and 50 percent of the questions they ask me instead of what you know regarding what the lord's saying about montana 50 percent of the questions they ask me were you know who are you submitted to Whose authority are you under? Stuff like that. <laughs> and it's just like, listen, I didn't say this. I was being polite. But I should have said it. <laughs> are you listening to the Holy Spirit? Because if you're listening to the Holy Spirit, you'll see the truth in what I wrote. Or you won't see it. It's either from God or it's not. Your spirit either bears witness with what the Holy Spirit is saying or it doesn't. The church has so many things out of order. You know, what, is, what has been taught in the church that I've seen is it's been taught that pastors should, or excuse me, that prophets should be submitted to pastors. And stuff like that. And I'm telling you, that's not the Scriptures. That's not the will of God. I understand that things are not perfect right now. And the Holy Spirit is working to bring things in order according to His Word. But the Scriptures are very clear. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. And that teachers is, is, is a corresponding with, with shepherds. It's, it's this group together, shepherds, teachers. But that's God's order of things. And right now, most of the church, not all, the majority of the church that actually believes in apostles and prophets is out of order. Their teaching is out of order. Their life is out of order. Because pastors, for the most part, or better, better referred to as shepherds, are still governing and first in the church, still ruling. That's why, we, that's why we do not see the body of Christ coming to full measure. 
And until this is corrected in the hearts of leaders, we're not going to see the church come to full, to full maturity. We're not going to see the Lord have a temple built for him. We're not going to see the body of Christ growing into the head who is Christ. So the Lord's calling us to repentance. He's, he's bringing us back to the scriptures for the remnant church to conform to his way of doing things. There's way too much false teaching in the church. Pastors are not to be first in the church. And this out of order is causing the delay. Because it's about Christ's will and His vision and His bride being made ready. And when His bride is not ready, He's not coming. When His bride is ready, He comes for His bride. And the full number of the remnant has come in has gone all the way with him, has become the, the bride, has made herself ready. But until that time, there's a delay. So it would behoove us to submit to the Lord's will and pray for the Lord to bring this forth. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. And to not have things backwards in the church at least the remnant, not have things backwards and out of order. Where they're calling for apostles and prophets to be submitted to pastors, shepherds. No, those ministries are to work together. Those ministries are to be a team. And oftentimes, the Lord will call an apostle and the apostle will operate to a degree as a prophet and as a teacher-pastor. I'm not saying everyone's like that, but I'm saying oftentimes it works that way. You see that in the life of Paul, who was an apostle and a teacher and a preacher, and he had prophetic encounters. He said he was caught up to heaven that are very similar to a prophet, just like John the apostle was caught up to heaven, clearly functioned as a prophet, having the same type of encounters that Daniel had. As long as pastors are the ones saying that they are on top of leadership, then the religious system will continue to go deeper into deception until it embraces the one world religion of the false prophet, because that's where we're headed, guys. Church is out of order. It's open to all sorts of deception. They're going to embrace, embrace this false unity. The religious system is going to embrace this false unity that comes forth. This one world religion put forth by the one world government. Pastors have got to have discernment. I've seen pastors that lift up and exalt and have preached messages and teaching from people like Robert Morris from Gateway Church because they could not discern. They were not mature enough. They did not have their senses trained to discern good from evil. And so they're supporting people who inwardly, in the hidden place, are walking in sin. And we know that came out recently that he had sexual relations with a 12-year-old girl as a young pastor. Same thing with Mike Bickle. Now, I'm not saying we can't glean and we can't appreciate some of the teachings, because not all teachings were false. I'm saying the Lord is speaking to us, guys, that just because someone appears to have a large ministry is anointed, 
can teach well, is gifted, does not mean their inward life and character and nature is in alignment with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And I'm saying that He's bringing us to this place of maturity where we have had our senses trained to discern good from evil. He's using these things, right? He's exposing these things, and we've been talking about this for years, that judgment is beginning in the house of God. The Lord has been doing that, obviously. Exposing sin, exposing these hidden things among leadership and removing them from His church as He, as he should. But He's teaching us through this. If He's teaching us that there's these hidden things, and we've got to be able to discern Not everyone is who they say they are, right? Not everyone is who they say they are. And we've got to listen to the Holy Spirit inwardly. He's leading us inwardly, guys. It's not by necessarily by visions and dreams, although He will give those to some people to lead them, right? But we're talking about the inward discernment discerning good and evil. You may not even know that one of these men, one of these top leaders is in some sort of hidden sin, it, but it's just the Holy Spirit isn't leading you to their ministry, right? Or He's leading you out of their ministry or whatever it is. What I'm saying is we need to listen to that inward leading. Maybe you can't even explain it, but you've got to follow the Spirit because He's leading you in the right direction. It's that inward, inner anointing, that inner discernment. As you mature, then you'll be able to discern more and more as we age, and as the Lord Jesus Christ increases in us. But sometimes He just leads and you don't even know exactly, but you're, you know that you're just not supposed to follow that ministry or follow that teaching because there's a mixture, there's a corruption because of the inward life of that minister. He's not walking fully with the Lord. There's hidden sin, abominations, a form of godliness on the outside, the appearance of godliness, of righteousness, of holiness, but inwardly denying the power because of the hidden life They're, they are living that is opposed to Jesus Christ. But I've seen pastors that can't even discern these things. They're blind leading the blind. They should be the ones who are spiritually mature and seeing things and not repeating and not digging into the teaching of some of these people. So pastors are held to a higher standard, but that's what I'm saying. That's part of the problem, is you have pastors leading the charge instead of the apostolic prophetic ministries, because much of the apostolic prophetic ministry has been rejected. The true. I understand there's the faults out there we should reject. Talking about the true. They have not been, messengers have not been received by, by shepherds in a large part of the charismatic church, Pentecostal church, spirit-filled church, however you want to say it. You know, John the Baptist and Jesus, for that matter, would have been accused as being lone rangers, right? Because they came out of nowhere. They weren't approved by the religious system. They weren't submitted to the religious system. And I guarantee you, I've probably been called the same thing by religious leaders. Lone Ranger. They usually, the, pastors will normally use that term as someone who's operating independently. Independently of them. <laughs> of their system. Guys, we need to hear this. And you want to know something? The Lone Ranger wasn't called the Lone Ranger because he was because he was in 
He was by himself. We need to understand that. The Lone Ranger was the Lone Ranger because he was with a posse. I think there were six of them. And they were, they were, they were deputized going after a criminal. And a criminal gang killed five of them. And there was one left, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> need to understand that. The enemy took out most of the team. And there was one remaining. If God would only have more Lone Rangers, those that could not be killed, those who could not be taken out by the enemy, but that stand for the will of God no matter what and keep going, regardless of what the religious system says, regardless of what the religious system calls them. If God would only have more Lone Rangers, that's what I say. And he wasn't alone, was he? Because he had a partner with him after that, right? Anyone who's ever seen the old TV series, the Tonto, he had a partner with him, a team. Just like Paul went out with Barnabas, Paul went out with Silas. Jesus sent his apostles out two by two. There was a team. Could be a husband and a wife. Don't listen to the lies of the religious system. Don't listen to the voice of the religious spirit through the religious leaders. Listen to Jesus Christ. There's a big difference between the independent spirit and being and being independent from God, okay? Let me rephrase that. The independent spirit, what that really is, is when you're being independent from God. Okay? The religious system will accuse you of having an independent spirit if you're independent of its authority, of the religious leader's authority, of, the, of that system. That system will accuse you and say you have an independent spirit, right? You're a lone ranger. You're trying to do things on your own. That's the voice of the religious spirit trying to get you to conform back to the system and not follow the Lord outside the camp. Do not heed that voice of the religious spirit that is calling you an independent spirit. I hope that's clear. We only have an independent spirit if we're independent of God and the will of God and we're following in our own will. I want to be conformed to the will of Jesus Christ. I want to be conformed to His, to His will, to His word. I want to be conformed to Him. If there's any independence in us, Lord, get it out, drive it out, conform us to Your will, Your purpose, Your plan. but I definitely want to be independent of the religious system. I am not going to be bound up by it because the religious system and the religious leaders will keep us from going all the way with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll stay out in the wilderness with just a small group of people if that's what it takes. I will not yield to the authority of this religious system in the religious leadership. I will stay under the hand of God. I want to walk with other true believers and followers of Jesus Christ who have gone outside the camp, separated themselves from this system, and separated themselves unto Christ. That's who I want to walk with. That's who I want to journey with. That's who I want to be friends with. They can call me independent spirit all they want. They can call me lone ranger all they want. But I'm going after Christ. They can have their system. They can have their form. They can have man's traditions. They can have the building of man. Meaning man's plan 
to build the church. They can have it. I want nothing to do with it. I want Jesus Christ. And I want Him to fill me. I want Him to increase in me. I want to be under His covering. So much of this crap taught by the shepherding movement about being under the covering of man, being under the covering of shepherds, it's crap, guys. Scripture says in Psalm 91, that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That word secret place in the Hebrew means to cover, covering, hiding place, to protect. The Hebrew word for shadow also means defense. So you want to be protected, you want to be under a covering, then remain under the hand of God, the will of God the direction of the Holy Spirit. Abide in Him. Remain under His authority. Yes, sometimes, yes, He will put us under authority of true ministers, true apostles and prophets, shepherds, teachers. I'm talking about being under His authority. Don't listen to the false teaching of being under man's covering. Be under Christ's covering, and He will lead you and guide you This is specifically true with younger believers. The Lord puts them under authority. I'm not preaching against authority from God's leadership. I'm saying there's very few of God's true leadership in the church. That's what I'm saying, or what calls itself the church. Because so much of it that calls itself the church is this religious system. And they don't, and the ministers do not carry the true authority from the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord Jesus Christ is only in them in a small measure, not Christ as a, as a great measure, as Christ the apostle, Christ the prophet, Christ the pastor teacher through them. That authority of Christ coming through the vessel to the church. So many of these leaders and ministers are bound up in a system. And the true authority of Christ isn't coming through. We need to be able to discern the difference and see the difference. The only scripture about being being covered is in 1 Corinthians 11. I'm not going to read it. I was going to, but I'm just not. Man is under the covering of Christ. And woman is under the covering of her husband. You can read that scripture, but that's what that scripture is talking about. And that's the only reference. That's the only covering doctrine in the Bible. Man is covered by Christ, and a woman is covered by her husband. That's how authority flows. Christ to the man, to the woman. So I was going to read that, but I'm not, guys. When we sit under true apostolic and prophetic authority, that is Christ flowing, Christ functioning, the mature man flowing through the leadership vessel, to the church, to the body of Christ, when we sit under that grace, family comes forth. You have a team working together. You have the church being built. You have believers operating in their gifts, functioning as the body of Christ that is growing up into the head in maturity, but also the gifts of the Spirit flowing. You have Christ being formed in a people. You have the living stones built into the temple where the Holy Spirit comes and dwells as a burning fire in His thick, fiery, glory presence where we can be lost in Him and remain in that place and continue to go deeper and deeper into Him. That's what happens when we're in alignment of God's true authority, God's true leadership. We're not going to get that 
inside the camp of the religious church, the religious system that is controlled by demons and men who are following after their own souls and their desires and their own destiny. They have never given up their life. They never gave up their life. They're still functioning in their self-life, trying to build something great, trying to establish something, trying to be known, trying to be recognized, trying to be accepted, trying to be popular, trying to cater. They cater to the self-life, guys, and they can't see it. They're blinded by it. They're bound in it. Blind leading the blind. Hebrews 13, 17. Continue to obey and be submissive to your leaders, for they are watching in defense of your souls as men who will have to give account of their trust. Treat them in this way so that they may work with joy and not and not with grief. That word obey means to agree, assure, believe, have confidence, to be content, to make friend, make friends, to obey, to persuade, trust to yield this is like a partnership it's like a mutual respect it's a respect of the lord flowing through the leadership vessel in no way is this meant to be controlling or manipulative it's meant to be building it's meant that it's leaders should serve the body of christ in terms of they want what's best for each individual part in each individual part of the body of Christ to succeed and to go all the way with Jesus and to be an overcomer. They want what's best for the church. And they allow Christ to flow through them, not in a controlling, manipulative way. Yes, sometimes they need to say things that are hard to the church and bring correction. That is absolutely true but in a way that loves people and wants the best for every person. and doesn't think of itself as not trying to build something for itself, not trying to use people for itself. We've seen so much of that in the religious system, trying to use people to build a ministry. So I'm going to skip a few scriptures here. I was going to read in 1 Peter chapter 5 because there's some good ones in 1 Peter chapter 5, but I'm just going to skip to Exodus 23, uh, Exodus 23, 20 through 22, and then I'm going to close. I'm going to leave it at this, guys. It says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and bring you into the place that I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice and do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. And if you indeed it, but if you indeed obey his voice and do all that you speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. This is just an example, guys, of the Lord's voice coming through a vessel. In this case, an angel. The Lord's voice came through Moses. Right? The Lord speaks through his apostolic prophetic vessels, the voice of the Lord. And when the voice of the Lord comes through his messengers we must obey the lord and that's what we're talking about submitting to authority it's submitting to the authority of the lord jesus christ and that is not an easy thing for us we um, excuse me that should not be a hard thing for us we should want to submit to the lord because submission to his voice submission to his will his authority, His plan, His purpose enables us to go all the way with Him. So I think I'll leave it at that, guys. I uh, appreciate you listening. I love you guys. And uh, continue to follow Jesus. Continue to pray for Him to increase in you. I am doing the same. And we need Him. If we if there's one thing that's for sure, we need Christ to increase in us. 
and I want him, and I want that, I want that for you guys. Um, I want to see everyone go as far as they can in him, to where Christ the overcomer is, is overcoming this world, sin, overcoming self-life in us and through every, every one of us, many as possible, coming into the remnant, coming into the bride. So thank you guys. I bless you in Jesus' name.